Now, doing the work, um, that is the first thing that we have there is the customer related um, processes. And we start with determining the requirements related to the product. Now you might think that's fairly straightforward, which it is, until you come to review of requirements. Now this comes in for special mention in ISO 90000 Part 3. Or not, I'm sorry, ISO 90003. It used to be 90000 Part 3. Uh, the reason for its special mention is not because this is peculiar in any way, other than that there is a lot of things that we frequently forget about software development. Now, of course, you're going to, to uh, review with the client, but yes, they are their requirements and they are clearly expressed and all that sort of stuff. However, what frequently gets forgotten is the concerns relating to the organization, that is, you. What are your organization's concerns? But these get frequently get left out. And as a consequence, people get into the, into the project and, oops, we're missing a few things, or regulatory requirements um, as they go. Now, some of these things are, for example, the feasibility of meeting and validating the requirements and the product characteristics. So you may have been given requirements for something that's basically impossible. Well, it clearly is not in your organization's interest to agree to try and deliver something that's impossible. So this is one of the requirements of your organization. It also could be that uh, your organization um, can't work in a certain place or you know, there, there are some reason why they can't meet those requirements or don't particularly want to meet those requirements. Um, but some of the other things that uh, the organization might have as requirements are this, the uh, standards to be used. Um, are you going to use a particular method or is it a different method for this one? Do some standards apply that weren't, aren't, aren't all part of the business as usual? There could well be. Um, there could be some uh, agreement to control the external interfaces with the software product. So uh, you know, there could be some standards there. Uh, there could be some replication or distribution requirements uh, that is on your part. There could be some uh, management issues. Now, one of those management issues that is um, frequently um, done badly is risk management. Now, reviewing your risks uh, is usually part of the initial project planning. comes very soon after the requirements are known and during the project planning. Now the reason why this uh, comes in for special mention when it should be very, very obvious is because in a review of uh, software development risk management, Paul Bannerman uh, found that most often organizations failed to consider the risks that they ought to have known about. That is, they encountered some risk on one project and probably forgot about it for the next project. They just repeated the same mistakes. So there, there are risks that you really ought to know about, that is your organization has known about them and you really ought to have been recording them. There are risks that are unknown to you but known to the industry. And I guess as a professional you really ought to go and have a look at those as well. And then there are the risks that nobody knows about that you're going to get caught with them at some point. So um, you have to make provision for, you know, bad things are going to happen and we can't guess them. Uh, but I do stress that uh, risk management is frequently um, not done particularly well in the rush to get the project started. So that's something that uh, really needs to be taken care of. Uh, the, the other things that uh, should come into the review of requirements are, as I encountered more than once, the customer states their obvious requirements or their special requirements, but forgets to mention those things that they consider, well, of course you would have done that, wouldn't you? Now this happens frequently, in, uh, in, the, in this particular case it happened in, in the context of a telecommunication device, where the customer specified all the different functions that the, the telecommunication device ought to have, but didn't mention all the functionality that he kind of assumed, well, of course you'd have that, wouldn't you? I mean, we've been telling you about that for years, surely you would have put that in. Well, they didn't tell us, and of course it never occurred to our engineers to do it. So you really ought to check whether 
uh, there are, are some uh, requirements that are, are simply assumed by the customer or assumed by everybody else. And yet, uh, if they're assumed and not documented, chances are you're just not going to get them. So review it for that as well. Now that's the main section on uh, reviewing the requirements. And it's a very good uh, uh, practice to review uh, the requirements when you get hold of them. Because poorly understood or poorly specified or volatile requirements cause more problems in software development than I uh, think just about anything.